Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis and welcome to this video lesson. I've just downloaded Visual Studio Community 2015 for free from the dreamspark.com website and so I just wanted to give you an overview of what it's going to be like to create a program in Visual Studio Community 2015. So let me go ahead and click on New Project and it looks like um, I can create programs in Visual Basic or I can create programs in C++, C Sharp, so forth and so on. Let me go ahead and click over here where it says Visual Basic and I have a Windows Forms application. I'm going to click on that. I have the ability to create a name so let's just simply say Hello World. It's a good, quick Visual Basic program. I'll go ahead and click OK. Give a couple seconds and then eventually a form will pop up. Looks like I can already see the toolbar and uh, the layout is very similar to previous Visual Studio versions, so that's good. Uh, let me go ahead and click on Common Controls and I'm going to drag a button and a label and also a text box. I'll move the label to the upper left hand corner and over here on the Properties panel, I don't need the Solution Explorer, so let me minimize that by clicking the Auto Hide Push Pin. But I do need the Properties panel. So let's go ahead and activate or uh, select rather the, the text label or the text property and we'll say enter your name. I'll place a text box right next to that label like that and I'm going to open it up giving the user an opportunity to enter their name. I'll take this button and I'll resize it something like this say for example. Actually, you know what, let me go less than half because I think I want to put a quit button in here as well. So something like this. And the text property will say submit. I'll take this button, copy and paste it with control C, control V as in Victor, put that over here, and I'll type quit for the text property. And then I'll take one of these labels over here, actually this one label, copy and paste it. I want to be able to resize that, so that's going to be the auto size property and I'll change that to false. This will allow me to resize it to something like this. Move it up a little bit. I'm trying to see if this space right here is equivalent to this space. Again, I'm just eyeballing it, something like that. I don't want that text in the upper left-hand corner. I want that to be in the middle center, so I'll go to the text align property, and I'll select this middle option over here, which is middle center. You can see the effect that it has on the text. Next, I'm going to go to border style, and I'll just simply select fix single. As you can see, a single line exists now around this label. And uh, let's get rid of this text. So I'll scroll down to the text property, double click, press backspace, and then get rid of the text. Now let me go ahead and resize the form so it looks symmetrical along the sides. Something like that looks pretty good. Let's say, for example, that in this case, I don't want the minimize or the maximize buttons. So I'll go to the Maximize box, double click, make that false. Minimize box, double click, make that false. And so you notice over here that I don't have any of those buttons. I don't want that to say Form 1. Instead, I'll go to the text property for this form and type in Hello World. Enter. And now I'm going to go ahead and give a name to the various items. So over here, I'm going to go to the name property and all text boxes are going to begin with the Hungarian notation TXT and uh, we'll just simply type in name. So TXT will be the prefix for all text boxes. For buttons, uh, that Hungarian notation is going to be VTN, submit. For the button, quit, that'll be BTN, quit. And then finally for this label down here, we're going to call that LBL result. This button I'm not going to name because, well, first of all, it already has a name. It's called Label 1, but I'm not going to give it an LBL name because it doesn't, it will not have an effect on our program. It's not going to be changed programmatically. It will always display, enter your name, so it's not necessary for me to change the text property or the name property for this particular label. All right, I think that's everything. Let me go ahead and select Save All. And it looks like it's going to save it inside of my Visual Studio 2015 Projects folder. That's good. I'll click Save. And let me go ahead and double-click Quit. 
that takes me into the code area. I'm going to click this toolbar button over here and this properties auto hide push button over here because that'll give me some more screen real estate. And um, if I want the font to be a little bit bigger, I can click over here and when you click 150%, that'll make the font size a little bit bigger. All right, so now let's go ahead and close this program whenever the user clicks the quit button. So that's going to be me.close, open and close parentheses, enter. So the me.close function closes the program anytime the user clicks the quit button. Let me go back over here to the design panel and you'll see a submit button over here. Let me double click that. And then what I want to do is I want to make it so that whatever name the user types over here, that we display hello and then that person's name right next to it. So let me go over here and type in lblresult.txt. That's this text button. I'm sorry, that's this label right here. And I want to affect the text property. Specifically, I want this to say hello. So within quotes, I'll say hello. Now, I'm not finished with the program. Let me just type this part right here. I'm going to run the program to show you what I've got so far. So I'll click the Start button over here, or I can press F5, give it a couple seconds, and then eventually a form is going to appear. And then I'm going to have the user click the Submit button. So here's the program. Let me click Submit, and you see the word Hello appears, because that's what we have our code doing. All right, let me go ahead and quit the program. Now, that should activate the me.close function. So I click quit and that stops the function. Perfect. Now I don't want this to just simply say hello. I want this to say hello and then whatever the person's name is in the text box. So I'll put the ampersand over here, which is the concatenation operator, which means to connect the left part and the right part. And that information is going to be connected with whatever the text is in the text box txt name. So in other words, whatever the text is inside of this text box, concatenate that with the word hello. So let me start the program again by clicking start and I'll type in Robert. Type, or I'll click start, hello Robert. So that's good, but as you can see here, there's no space between hello and Robert. So let me quit the program and I'll put a space right here. Then I'll click start. And let me type in Joshua. Hello Joshua, good. Type in Jackson. Hello, Jackson. All right, looks good. Let me quit the program. You know, it'd be nice is if I press Enter, and that's the same thing as clicking Submit, or if I press Escape on the keyboard, that would be the same thing as clicking Quit. So let me go ahead and select the form, and then I'm going to open up the Properties panel once again, and I'll click the Auto Hide Push Pin so it stays intact. And I'm going to go to the Accept Button property. Now what the accept button property does is it's, it makes it so that there is a relationship between pressing enter and clicking a particular key. So if I click the drop down, you'll notice that I have all of my buttons that are possible options and I'll make it so that the BTN submit button has a relationship with the enter key on your keyboard. In a similar fashion, when I select the quit button, or actually I shouldn't select the button, that's a common mistake here, I should select the form and I'm going to scroll down to the Cancel button property. So that is right here. And then once again, when I click the drop down, it's going to show me a list of all the buttons. And I want to make it so that the BTN Quit button has a relationship with the Escape key on the keyboard. Let's see if it works. So if I click Start, and uh, let me go ahead and type in uh, Kristen, so for example. And I'm not going to click, in fact, I'll move my mouse pointer over here so you'll see it's on top of the label. I'm not going to click the Submit button. Now what I'm going to do is to simply press Enter on the keyboard. So I press Enter on the keyboard. Perfect. Hello, Kristen. All right, now I'm, my mouse pointer is over here on top of the label. I am about to press Escape on the keyboard. That should quit the program. So I'm going to press Escape. Yep, there it is. It quit the program. And that's it. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. You guys have a good day. We'll see you next time.